Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, this is Big Mac's Workshop and Paint Studio. I'm Dodge, and today we're building a hive tyrant. Now, some of our old subscribers will remember last year uh, we were thinking of doing a bunch of tyranids in natural colours from the natural world. Uh, we did a con effects and the theme of a uh, lobster, crab sort of thing. And this is going to be a hive tyrant. I'll show you the actual picture in a second. I want it splashing out of the water. It's going to be painted in this sort of manner as this uh, praying mantis because I thought that looked really, really cool. Um, didn't come out exactly the way I wanted it to, but there you go. Uh, one of the first things I did with this was uh, bore a hole in and because I want to raise it above a water level and I wanted the tail splashing water forward so I had to um, cut away the actual stand that you would glue to the base which meant going into these um, spikes here and carefully cutting around the edges and sanding and filing all that. So, without any further mucking about, let's get on with the video. A lot of these parts are done in a sub-assembly, so we'll, we will be going back and forth a bit, and I've started by priming the whole thing in Vallejo Black Primer. It was, it's a really nice primer, it gives a good smooth coat. And the colour I'm using here that seems to look white on the camera at the moment is actually just Bone White by Game Colour. The pigment for this one's a bit larger than some of the others, so if you want to switch to a different model air sort of colour, you can uh, use that. This is only the uh, first highlight, so we're going to do a lot of blending on these. We're going to go back and forth between the first two colours quite a bit. See, I had a lot of problems interpreting this into the stick insect thing because obviously the shapes are different. So what I did was follow what was down the front of him, down the tail and down the front of the hive tyrant. The next colour will be Castellian Green by Games Workshop. I'm going to spray that into the uh, black sections. But what I did realise later on was the overspray I was getting would, would, would make the bone go a uh, really nice sort of yellowy green tint to it. So eventually I do end up overspraying all that so um, it has a much nicer, less vivid colour. So we want, I want to keep things slightly muted um, and more natural looking rather than vibrant. As you can see I've filled all that in. Now the dots I did, they are optional, you don't have to put any dots in on this. It was just something uh, I wanted to carry that sort of pattern on. That was done with just bone white again. Really watered down, which is uh, what makes it take so long. But the problem when you put a blob of uh, watered down paint on there, if it's just a dot, it does tend to dry with the white bit, the centre bit not quite as white as the rest, so you have to go over it a few times. And then, uh, hey presto, we're going back to bone white again, but only over the uh, top parts where I want the light to be reflective at this point. I also went over the dots with the Castellian green again, further in the centre to blend those out and tone them and they'll get a few more coats. They do fade out by the end of this quite a lot actually, um, but at this point I was still winging it, coming up with some ideas. Then to uh, start toning it orange, like the rest of the Mantis, I decided to use Reclam Flesh Shade and a hell of a lot of medium as you can tell. Because uh, I'm not trying to actually shade the model, I'm just using it as a filter to give it a more warm, ye orangey yellow tone. <laughs> and we're going to go over all the colours on the uh, tail at this point. Uh, that way they'll all blend together and not look like separate colours look like part of one organic living thing. Now because I need to add some blues into this I decided that I would uh, prime the top part black again. What I'm going to do is uh, blend that black in. Uh, the carapace at the back as well, I'm going to paint that black. The reason we're doing that is because we're going to build up a blue and the blue for the top part which was done separately um, ended up being a lot more vibrant, so I needed to work on it the same sort of way. <clears throat> then we're going to use Thunderhawk Blue. And we're going to gently blend the top to bottom. Um, 
that's going to help with the cone of the airbrush. You know, because it thins out the further it gets down. And as you can see, this is the top part, and the reason we pr primed the other part black is so uh, the colour matches completely. This is a uh, Thunderhawk blue again. Just going over those black parts, and we're going to blend those in. It doesn't matter if you overspray onto the uh, bone white at this point, because there's going to be so many colour transitions on this. Don't forget to do the uh, back part, and obviously I've kept the head off so it's easier to paint it that way. Now we're going to mix a bit of Castellian Green to the Thunderhawk Blue. And that actually makes the blue quite a bit more vibrant than it was before. Also giving it a slightly bluish, turquoisey green colour. Obviously it looks a lot brighter when I'm spraying it on, but um, when it dries it darkens down a bit. Just over the raised areas and um, down the uh, side because I wanted those stripes to blend into the blue and then the blue to blend into the carapace. And now we're going to be using Castellian Green again. We're going to be using that colour a lot and Thunderhawk Blue. And what I'm going to do is uh, water it down so it's almost a wash consistency and start blending the inside of the rib cage. If you can call it a rib cage, I'm not sure what it is. I mean, Hive Tyrants have like an exoskeleton thing going on, so I'm assuming it's some form of rib cage. Some of these bits of footage are also uh, missing because I painted so many different sections at different times. But I'm going to try and fill you in the best I can. The carapace was painted dark Prussian blue over the black. And then we're using Oldorf blue to start highlighting the uh, tops of it. We're going to um, work all those edges in. I hope you can sh see that showing up quite well on the uh, camera. And the wings. Oh my god, the wings. I painted these three times. And I kept stripping them off and starting them again because I wasn't happy with them. Um, Thunderhawk Blue. That's all that is, sorry. Thunderhawk blue on its own. I was going to do a pre-highlight, but I wanted this blue to match the blues for the back of the carapace. Not the carapace. For the torso part. So um, it all looks natural. <clears throat> and after that, again, adding a bit of Caliban green into that Thunderhawk blue. It's the same sort of thing that we did with the... Um, bottom half. I just wanted to give it all a slightly green tone uh, so it matched the front part. Then we're using Army Paint a Blue Tone watered down to uh, add some depth to that. Now we do start adding this wash onto the other blue parts as well. It's just I didn't feel it necessary to show you those steps over and over again because this video is already quite long. Uh, try not to let it pull too much, uh, you really want to try and get a smooth filtered coat of this and just take your time with it. And again some of the other parts are uh, off camera, so what I did off camera was re-highlight again in Thunderhawk Blue, then Thunderhawk Blue and a tiny bit of Rust Grey. Let's try and get that camera to focus properly. As you can see we're starting to get some nice highlights on this now. And that um, army paint a blue tone gave a nice depth to the underneath. See, I want the uh, membranes to be a different shade of blue, so uh, I haven't painted those yet. Then I'm going to use a uh, rust grey dry brush, because we've been using an airbrush up until this point. I wanted some uh, more stark colour to the highlighted areas. I'm only really dry brushing the uh, top areas of all of this. And as you can tell, the way the wings bend round, there's only certain parts where the light will be. But um, it's up to you how you want to do the dry brush on these. Um, I wanted to just touch, I wanted to touch those parts because my hive tyrant's going to be lent quite far back, splashing out of the water. So that's just the way I did it. Now we're using Colia green shade and water 
and we're going to start adding that collier green shade to the torso as well in the blue parts in all those uh, recesses i'm just gently airbrushing this um wash into the underneath parts because what we're going to do is add bits of green around there on the actual membranes for the wings and uh, blend those in it's going to have a lot of natural patterns on it So what I did then to protect all that work is I uh, hit it all with a gloss varnish then decided that um, I didn't want any overspray getting on the parts that we'd done so I covered them in mascot which took quite some time because with mascot you make a mistake and it goes too far onto the uh, membranes you've got to peel it off and uh, start that section again. But all I'm doing here is just uh, priming it black to give us a good solid base to work from. Now I'm going to use Grey Primer by Vallejo to start pre-highlighting the uh, membranes on the wings. Oh, sorry about that, I needed a drink. And um, again, we're going to use Thunderhawk Blue, but it's going to be a slightly lighter tone now because you've got the um, greys on the underneath of it. And I don't really want to take the um, Thunderhawk Blue all the way down to where the black recesses are. I just want to tint it ever so slightly to keep that shade in there. Give some good depth and movement to the wings. As you can see, that's a, a lot brighter than the uh, other one was. Uh, without the pre-highlight. And after that, I'm just going to add a small amount of rust grey and uh, start bringing out where the pre-highlights are even further to make those wings a bit more three-dimensional uh, a bit more striking it took quite some time to do this step because it's really really watered down and uh, that's why it's not showing up so well on the camera even though I uh, speed up these bits of footage it can take a lot of time to uh, see the transition actually occur now I've mixed Caliban Green and a little bit of Black Primer because as you, if you remember the photo at the, the beginning um, it's got a lot of green black dots on the uh, wings and this didn't translate as well as I thought it would onto this model um, in hindsight there's a lot of things I could have done a bit better with this model um, I would have put more green on the wings, like a lot more And once I've put this particular pattern on, which does take forever because you've got to match it up on both sides, I um, started adding more Caliban Green with black, but this time I added a bit more Caliban Green and even more water to it because I want it really watered down. And I've obviously masked all the surrounding areas off, so when I spray this we get a, uh, a green tinted pattern over the uh, membranes of the wings. And we'll be coming back to that later. Castellian green was used on the torso part. That's why that's changed colour from last time. And then I'm going to bring that back up again using the, uh, the bone white. Really watered down. You can see it picking up on the um, around around the claw area. There was a lot of back and forth with this model. Um, bringing colours up and then blending them back down but because I'm using an airbrush I can do that quite a lot. Now this is at this point is quite an important step because what we do to this tail here is what we're going to do to all the other blue parts to really give them depth and bring them out so it's not all airbrush work guys. You are actually going to have to pick up a brush at some point and do something. No! <laughs> now we do love our airbrushes. So what I did off camera there, before putting this wash on, was use Thunderhawk Blue, Thunderhawk Blue and Rust Grey, then Rust Grey. Now what I'm doing is adding water and Collier Green Shade. And what we're doing there is blending the green part of that tail to the blue part. And now I'm going to add two washes at once, which is Army Paint a Blue Tone and Collier Green Shade. Army paint a blue tone on the blue part and Collier green shade on the green part of the tail 
and start blending them together. If you've seen the how to paint screamers of Zinch video where I was blending purples and greens together, it's technically the same technique. But we're going to use this colour wash step on all the parts where the blue flesh meets green. And again, I've uh, done those washers, like I said, on this part. So now it's time to uh, pick up the bone again. In fact, I do believe I added a little bit of Reclam flesh shade to that at some point because that part hadn't been done. I told you it would get a bit confusing with it being edited the way it is and um, I'm obviously picking up parts and recording at different, at different times. And again we're going to use a Thunderhawk blue again. Same sort of technique as before but um, now we've done all those washers we're going to bring those back up. I was quite chuffed with the highlights on this tail by the time I'd finished it and uh, quite a few of the other blue bits as blue is not one of my comfort zones. As I was saying this is Thunderhawk blue again and I'm just glazing it on extremely lightly with the brush. And then obviously it's the same sort of step so we're going to go and uh, add a rust grey to that. But uh, only in the raised areas and in this particular case the raised area is on the left of the camera because that's going to be flicking out of the water. And obviously after we've done the uh, Thunderhawk and Rust Grey, it's just Rust Grey on its own. And uh, just follow that all the way around, but don't do that on the membranes for the wings because uh, we want those a different tone. And yeah, that's just uh, Rust Grey on its own. I'm sorry about this um, step being so long, but this particular step covers all of that particular style of blue that we're doing over everything so you can get that colour match. And if you really wanted to, you probably could have done this without an airbrush, but it would have took ages. I already spent ages painting it with the airbrush. And this is just what I've got so far, just blue tacked the, um, the legs and everything else on. Because um, I was trying to get a good feel for this, I thought I'd show you what I was up to. And of course, this is the first time you'll have seen the wings without the mask all on them as well. In hindsight, I wish I'd done the membranes on the wings the same colour as the um, greens and yellows for the uh, tail. Now to add even more patterns and interesting parts to the wings. We're going to use Rhinox Hide. Now what I've done with the mask all is where every one of those uh, bone-like structures joins on the wings. Um, I've done a bit of mask all, and in between the start and finish of each of those points that look like bone, I've done two strips of mask all. That way we get this uh, repeating pattern all the way down the wings. And um, I'm not gonna cover the whole of what's still exposed with the Rhinox hide. As you can see there, I want it to blend out into the um, into the blues. So now I'm using an Army Painter Strong Tone, just mixed down with water, uh, and spraying the wash in, pretty much. Trying to add a uh, bit more depth to it. I didn't want to put the uh, wash on with a brush and have it pull up next to the mask all leaving hard lines. Although in hindsight, that could actually look really good with a much darker lines around the outside so it's you know got its own edge highlight essentially and then we're going to use Rhinox Hide and Rackarth Flesh because it's me and I'll use Rackarth Flesh wherever I can for highlighting anything I may do a video at some point of just me painting a model and using nothing but Rackarth Flesh to highlight things that could be interesting challenge you to that Andy, pick pick a white or an off white and only use that to highlight with. You're doing that with your army mate. That's true, fully white army. <laughs> so after I've peeled all the mask all off, which uh, took ages to put on, it had three different layers of mask all on. This is the uh, patterning we've got. These wings took so much longer in real life than the video. I mean it's ridiculous how long they took. And I painted them three times. 
but in hindsight I should have done a lot more with those greens and uh, I have a lot less blue. Now you've not seen me uh, do anything on the arms but the, essentially these are the same techniques that we use for everything else and in those joins there where it's a bit more orange we've basically added a tiny amount of really watered down burnt umber. I've also added burnt umber into the recesses to give it more of an orangey tone on all, all the other bone parts as well. Now I wasn't quite sure for some time what to do with the uh, fleshy parts that stick out of the carapace. I'm not sure what they are because I'm not a nid player, but they're all over the Tyranids. Um, ended up filling them in with dryad bark eventually. I started just doing this wash to, to see if I had a feel for it and see what was what, but ended up just blocking them out using dryad bark. And I also did dryad bark on all the claws and everything else, so we've got this same colour palette going on. That's including that particular claw. Then Thunderhawk Blue was uh, used to paint strips along the uh, claw, because I wanted them to look interesting. And um, I've got so much on the palette at this point, that a block colour of any kind is just not going to work. It's just going to stand out too much because it's uh, too plain, if that makes sense. If I did that in just bone, it really wouldn't stand out from everything else. Um, it'd be weird. Then Caliban green and black. See, we're sticking to that same palette. We're just putting things in different patterns and uh, in different techniques. But we are leaving some of the dryad bark deliberately showing as a blend between the two. As you can see, if you skip back to the picture at the beginning, you can see where all these colour schemes and patterns have come from. Then I'm going to go in with a uh, wet palette and the uh, Caliban green and start bringing up the uh, colour a little bit more towards the uh, serrated edges. Because at the moment it's a little bit flat. And all you need to do to uh, complete those is use those same colours that we've been using in the same order and just bringing them up sharper and sharper until you're happy with it. And this is just a step of uh, what we've got so far. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, ah, great. Army paint a strong tone, Rhinox hide, rack off flesh. Burnt umbers watered down and added to the recesses, dryad bark. Just like I've got myself a bit lost. This is an update. I can tell you what's on here though. The um, joins that I said I didn't know what to do. I started adding Tusker fur to the dryad bark to start blending those to look more like a pinky flesh colour. But I didn't want it too pink. The dots were done in light grey by Model Air. And uh, yeah, started highlighting the other blues. Which were Old Dwarf blue and then Alatic blue. So now we jump into the head and I'm just showing you the um, the steps it took to highlight the uh, fleshy parts. See, um, but this particular one, instead of doing it the dryad bark, I wanted a bit more of a red tone, so I started with a rhinox hide. And I'm just being really careful there with the uh, brush not to get it on any of the blue parts. Uh, that was rhinox hide plus tusker fur, really watered down. Then we're just going to add more Tusker fur to that mix. But at this point, we're only picking the highlights of the gums. where We want the recesses to uh, stay that darkish pink brown sort of colour. Then after that, it will simply be Tusker fur purely on its own. As you can see, I'm just skimming the lower parts and the higher parts of the gums. Anything that really sticks out. I also did the tongue in the same fashion um, because I couldn't really decide what other colour to do it. But I just highlighted it up a bit brighter, uh, put more of the Tusker fur on. So this is just Tusker fur and Tusker fur and then add a little bit of Reclam Flesh Shade to it. Because Reclam Flesh Shade for the win. Because it doesn't make your colour whiter or whatever, it's an off-white, so it kind of works really well. 
Yeah, this will be the to uh, Tusker Fur and Reckle and Flesh. You want to be really sparing with this. Just the hard edges and most pronounced highlights of the gums. I think there's a lot of uh, cool features on this model, but um, doing the whole thing with this many layers of paint, it gets quite tiresome. And this palette was just crazy. Now we're going to use Drushi Violet and Null Oil because I didn't want to make those gums too purple, but I did want a purple tone to them. And Drushi Violet by Games Workshop is a bit of a cartoony purple quite bright so if you mix it with null oil you get a much uh, more earthy rich sort of purple and mainly focusing those in the um, gaps of the gums so just add a little bit more depth and as you can imagine the uh, teeth are pretty simple to do all it's going to be is a uh, sandry dust and I'm using a Windsor Newton series 7 because it's fine detail work here just a uh, sandry dust really watered down and glazing down the fronts of those teeth until you get a, a nice even colour. As you can see by the neck and everything else, they've had that little bit of burnt umber wash and uh, Reclam Flesh Shade to tone it orange. And I've also left the back of the neck slightly blue so it blends into the rest of the armour as well. After that, we're going to add a little bit of a Shabti Bone to the Zandri Dust mix. And... Uh, highlight the middle of the teeth because they actually curve inwards so that would be the uh, highlight spot for those and then of course you just keep repeating this step as then a shabti bone on its own then screaming skull and then a wash and you just keep repeating that until you're happy with them really now this has been quite a long video uh, I do hope that covers everything, uh, I do apologise for the footage that was missing. And uh, here was the final result. I'm not happy with the base that I, I put it on, but time was running out on this one. Because uh, I entered it in Golden Demon and um, my base messed up with a casting and I basically had no time to fix any of it whatsoever. And there we have it, one Hive Tyrant in the, in the scheme of a... Uh, praying mantis so guys if you like that video hit like hit subscribe share with your friends if you've got any questions leave a comment we'll see you in the next one thanks for watching guys